Hello everyone, it's Jesse back here with another Deck Builders Challenge, and I've got Neil back with me again. Johnny McAwesome, how are you doing today, man? Good, I'm glad to be back. Yeah, glad to have you back. So this week we're doing Bolthorn Warlord. So, uh, you know, before I kind of go into Bolthorn Warlord and you go into Bolthorn Warlord, I just want to read about the card, kind of explain it to people watching, and maybe make some clarifications before everybody starts uh, getting excited about some card combos that may or may not work. So Bolthorn Warlord costs 6 Solarium. He's a Jotun combatant. He is a Type 4 combatant. He has a construction cost of 2. He has 3 attack and 6 defense. Uh, has the keyword flight, and then uh, has the, this really cool ability that says during a joint strike force, Bolthorn Warlord and all attackers that you control that participate in a joint strike force with Bolthorn Warlord get a plus 3, plus 0 this attack. It's a really long-winded way of saying if he joint strike forces with other combatants he gets plus three plus oh now before we jump into some really cool combos that i think might exist and talk about how neil evaluates the card uh, i want to just make a clarification uh, both Thorn warlord will not work with kaiser uh, reason being is when we call out the name of a card both Thorn warlord we're referring to the card that is attached to it. So in other words, uh, the card has to be named Bolthorn Warlord to get the trigger to go off. So a Kaiser copied Bolthorn Warlord will not get a plus three plus O. Um, he will get the plus three plus O alongside another Warlord on the battlefield, but getting your guys plus six plus O would require two Warlords on the battlefield. Um, that being said, I think Warlord is kind of unique in such that we didn't constrain his design and ultimately set him up in a way that he can work with any kind of combatant, even including the mercenary combatants, which means that those mercenaries can kind of get bigger, badder, and stronger with Warlord around. And it's one of the few ways you can buff attack power on mercenaries. I mean, something kind of cool about the idea of maybe a harp being a 7-4 or... Um, you know, Kaiser still being a 6-6 six, six with flight. Uh, those are all pretty good plays no matter what. Um, so, Neil, tell me, how, how do you evaluate Bolthorn? What is it that you like about the card? What is it that you think is, you know, some of the reasons it's not seen as often in competitive play anymore? Because it certainly got some competitive play early on. Right. So the classic story that everybody likes to tell is from... Uh, the first Great Plains Festival, which I was not present for, but is the largest attack in a sanctioned tournament <laughs> where they got brought from 25 to negative 40-something. And it was due to both on Warlord plus a bunch of guys. And, I mean, attacking for a zillion damage is a big draw. Like, it's one of the feasible ways you can actually win on the off initiative attack back um you know it the attack back mechanic is cool and it gives you a chance to to come back and you know make up some of the tempo that you lost from not going first but a lot of times you fall short like you just you go to negative 10 and then you attack back and put them at 10 or 5 or whatever but Bolthorn legitimately like breaks that stalemate and smashes for a thousand. Yeah. The the problem with Bolthorn is that he's in a slot that competes with Fenris. And after doing the math this last week while we were building these decks, if you have a Jotun combatant and you play a Fenris, the Fenris and that Jotun combatant are one better than that Jotun combatant plus Bolthorn. Fenris is already three bigger. He has focus two, and he pumps them both for one. So instead of giving plus six to the two guys, he gives plus seven. Um, and that doesn't take into account if you have an Art of War, which Fenris will turn on and the Bolthorn will not. That being said, once you have several more guys, Bolthorn is way bigger. Mm -hmm. It's just a giant attack. And that's that's the big draw, you know? You look at a game where we talk about attacking to win, and if you're attacking me and I'm attacking you with a Bolthorn, I'm going to win. <laughs> yeah, it definitely accelerates beyond the damage race, right? Like, it's it's the, you can't outrace a Bolthorn-enabled Jotun board. It's just... It's just too hard, and heaven forbid they have like an oath key or something to go alongside that, because now you do have the art of war on and a bullthorn on, and that's just 
that's just monster numbers for sure. You know, plus three, plus five, plus two is, is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, you know, a gray Harrier turning into a seven, three is crazy, right? Like, I mean, that's not, um, that's nothing to just get like, okay, I should be, you know, I can just laugh that away. Right. He, he kind of sits in a slot. That's kind of a win more card. If you're making six Solarium as Joe too, and you're, you're probably doing pretty good, but I like win more cards that end the game, and he does that. Yep. And and he does it at a pretty reasonable cost if he is a win more card, right? If he is a card that you run a one of or a two of just to try to win more and, it, and help you seal the deal on some games where maybe you just didn't have the damage output to finish it by turn six and you risk this satellite network facility coming down on seven or something and uh, wrecking your day, you know, that's uh, he, he's the only way to really maybe get that done. So... Uh, I think what we found, at least in my opinion, is is that there are some pretty fast Jotun decks out there in the format right now that are winning faster than Bullthorn can make an impact. And I think that's part of the reason why he's kind of seen more card boxes as of late. But I'm not sure that, you know, as the, the game of evolves and expands and adds more cards, that this speed that exists today will continue to function um, at the I same caliber. I absolutely caliber. agree. Yeah. The... The big problem for Bolthorn was the printing of Wargana. Because um, Wargana is like a tiny Bolthorn where she just gives plus two to all your guys. Yep. And uh, she only costs four. Yep. And she turns on her reward. She does a lot of things. Yep. Wargana is a really nice utility card that the Jotun needed. And that just kind of fits in that same slot that Bolthorn was in and is just a little bit faster and more efficient. But. Bolthorn is sweet. He has a small synergy with uh, the flight deck that probably is not very meaningful when you're attacking for a thousand, but he's just, he's all around cool. He's like a card that when you think of the Jotun faction, I always think of that art. He's got like a weird spear with a skull on it. It's really cool. Yeah. And he's just an awesome guy that. I hope sees a lot more play. Yeah, and from a lore perspective, for those people that are interested, like House Bolthorn, this is the only card we've even remotely talked about from House Bolthorn yet. So this gives you a real flavor for understanding. Each house has um, a Warlord, and Bolthorn's Warlord we printed. Uh, we have not printed the other House Warlords yet. And uh, he gives you a really good understanding of what House Bolthorn is going to bring to the Jotun and kind of gives you a sneak peek at some of the future design space we intend to explore regarding House Bolthorn in particular. So, um, you know, that's kind of a fun little tidbit design fact, you know, that uh, probably not many people know, but there are no other Bolthorn cards in the game right now. So, um, yeah, Neil, I mean, like from that perspective, when you built your deck today, did you what were some of your design decisions around Bolthorn? Like there's probably a couple of different paths if you're going to build with Bolthorn. Um, what, what are those that you feel are the, the key choices you have to make here? So when I sat down for this one and I was putting my deck together, I started with a harp control deck shell because like you were talking about earlier, Bolthorn pumps the mercenaries so you don't lose a lot. Um, playing Harp or Johnny or any of those guys, they still get the giant attack power. Um, but I was trying to think of just, like, what would feasibly get me to six consistently to show off the Bolthorn. Um, so I wanted to play a slur game, but that kind of fell apart. I, I think that while it's cool that he pumps the mercenaries, what you want to be doing is playing as many little guys as you can to maximize the Bolthorn output. And playing four drops are, is not going to do that. Like, you want to curve out. You want to hit shields and uh, saboteurs in multiples. And the advantage of that is that you also get to play strength in numbers, which gets you to six to play the Bolthorn. And strength in numbers specifically is one of the cards that you're talking about before where you design them very narrowly to the team so it wouldn't count the harp or the Johnny or anything if you're playing those. 
So you got to play Jotun guys to get the additional Solarium out of it. Um, that being said, I think that uh, this version is a little bit more consistent. You just have more Jotun guys and Art of War is turned on. And I hope that uh, I get to smash you for 60. Yeah, yeah, I, I hope so too. I mean, as much as I will hate losing, I, I hope so as well. So, uh, I mean, there's not much more to talk about on when we're talking about like kind of an aggro card, you know, the obvious combos are any guy that can go with him, right? So that's kind of the beauty of Bolthorn is he's not he's not so situational. Um, you know, Organa can be a little situational, right? If you don't have the swords and shields of Rothgar, her effect is, is a kind of a net zero for you. Uh, whereas Bolthorn goes, I, I don't care what your guys are on the battlefield. I'm going to make them all better. And, uh, I think that does leave some design space or some deck building space to consider Bolthorn. I'm, I don't think anybody probably ever plays a full playset, And I don't think even back in the original competitive meta, they, you know, uh, the original meta when it came out did either, but, um, you know, I think as a one of or a two of in a deck, as a you know kind of a, a win more card like you talked about, I think he's a really good good choice for that. Maybe even better than Morgana at times, and he's cheaper than Morgana. He's more expensive Solarium wise, but he's cheaper in terms of construction cost, which kind of frees up those valuable points for you know some of their tactics like from Winsaw came and stuff like that. All right, so, you know, not much else to be said here. I think Neil and I are going to just jump right into gameplay. Uh, we're going to do things a little different this week because we're we're not focused on a mercenary card where we can both kind of include them in individual faction decks, and we didn't think it'd be very much fun to watch two different Bolthorn decks just going straight at it. So Neil built the Bolthorn deck. I'm going to be playing some test decks that uh, I'm testing with that if I was going to be competing in nationals, these would be where I'd be starting um, in both Cynthia and Jotun. Hey everyone, uh, we're ready to get started with the game now. Uh, obviously we just talked about the showcase card, we had a little bit of recording trouble, so that's why we're not just transitioning smoothly here and just uh, instead we're uh, going to record video. So um, Neil, we're going to get started here, want to roll us off and, and uh, see if uh, you can beat me on initiative this week. 18, looks pretty good. Yes. And I roll a five. So you get the initiative this week. I got there. All right. I would like to go first. Okay. I know we talked about uh, that Bolthorn is one of the enablers of the giant crackback, but uh, I am yep. not confident enough to... <laughs> Just need some more test games. To play for that. Yep. Yeah. I need to play another 50 games, and then I will know if it is the right play to play second. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so I'm going to start with one and pass as well, so it's back to you. All right. I kept the hand. Um, not a great opener, but it's not a bad one for me. Hopefully you're not going to open up with me on, like, a turn two oath key or something. Can't do that oh. anyways because you can get a watchtower, but... Uh. Right. I do have a spoils. I guess I should put this in the back row. I do have a pretty good open. I have a harrier and a saboteur. That's a pretty good open. Go ahead. Okay. I do not have a site for turn two, so pass turn. Can I get four damage in this turn? That's pretty good. Gray here is a hell of a card. I, uh... He's a little card that can for three construction Yeah. <laughs> Three construction is pretty steep. I'm not sure about him yet, but he's he's much a needed tempo. effect in the game. <laughs> yeah, he's a much needed okay, tempo so for sure. I'm gonna play this other saboteur. Okay. Then I'm gonna attack you for. Uh, I don't think I need to leave up two damage. I'll just tag you for four. Sounds good. There is an argument to be made to leave it back, but I don't think that we're in that game. But Right there yet. I have the the free info that you're playing Cynthian. If you're playing if I knew you were playing Jotun, I'd be more to leave him back at two. Yeah, that's fair. damage. You may have wanted to after this is all said and done though. Cause it would have given you a rare opportunity, maybe. But um Probably not, because you didn't make enough to ping him. Yeah. So. I didn't right. make eight. <laughs> Pass the turn. All right. This is a hand. All 
I don't have a site. But I do have a strength in numbers. Okay. And a bolt on Warlord. Made seven. Good play. Turn four of Warlord. That's uh, the beginning of the end for me here, I think. All right. Um, during my end of turn window, uh -huh. I want to stack a couple of these on your guy. I'll evade okay. that. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. I will evade that for sure. <laughs> got him. Okay, so I got four. We'll play a shield generator. Suppose because you got saboteurs, we better put that out there. Because the team, the team may want to come in, but you know, maybe you won't. It's hard to say. Um, but I got some play here, so we'll do double heroes boon. Oh boy. <laughs> so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And all I got's an animus box for my nine. That was a lot scarier than a lot yeah. less scary than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Um I'll swing five at the watchtower though. Okay, that's fine. I have no blocks or effects. Okay, fast turn. I take three. Okay. Part of the problem is, is you don't ever have to attack with those saboteurs, and so, like we were talking about in the the showcase, like Harrier and Bolthorn together is not bad. <laughs> it's yeah. Ten damage, so um, it's it's going to be difficult for me to to play around that. Or yeah, sort this, of this game played out pretty well for me. Um, so I'm going to play a strength of numbers from my hand. Okay. To make four, seven again. Yep. I'm going to play a shield and a cloud falcon. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. I can already tell I need to fit its traps into this deck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not, not the sure cool thing that. about Saboteur is that he plays around that pretty good. So let's send the guys into your uh, front row there, your okay. shield. No defenders. All right, so we'll trigger the Bolthorn, and I believe that's exactly 1,000. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close. <laughs> you got an Art, an of, Art of War. War. Okay, so... Um, and, right. uh, so the Bolthorn triggers for 3, 6, 9, 12, plus 2 from the... Vasad is 14, 2 from the Harrier 16, 2 from the Vasad is 18, 3 from plus an, another yeah. 4 from the 21 plus 4 is 25 into 9. Yeah. So 25 into 9 is um let's see, would that be 16 and 4 is 20? Uh, this this absorbs 5. Right. Uh, so I take 20. Or you take 24. Because you take four from the side dying too. Right. Take twenty four. Go to negative three. And uh, yeah, good hit. <laughs> I will pass turn. Okay. I'm not breaking any records with that one. I should have no. waited a turn. No, but uh, you know what? <laughs> I think you don't I, need to. Well, yeah, winning the game is pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Make a metric ton of solarium. Two, four, six, seven, and four is eleven. Terminator and a novum. Swing for nine into the shipyard, so that would be four and two is six. Shipyard absorbs three, so. I take six. Uh, 
and then I double system scramble you to take you to 10. Still got some licks in. <laughs> that's just the empirical, not... like, but not both orn licks. Right. And that's, that's kind of what I expected. Like, Warlords in the deck, you almost don't need the type 1, right? Like, it's... It, there's something to be said about it. Yeah, uh, I mean, he has the advantage of being like Oathkey plus Art of War when you're a bunch of guys. Oathkey obviously better by himself, and also better to like be able to turn to in the right situation. Right. But, I mean, that was the perfect game to show off how good uh, Bolthorn can be because. I just played him early and smashed for a thousand. Exactly. Yep. All right. So uh, I'm going to keep this hand. My hand is very questionable. Okay. Uh, but I think I'm going to keep it. Okay. Here we I go. like to live dangerously. I do like to live dangerously. Pass the turn. <laughs> so face down, pass. Okay. Face down and pass. All right. Yeah, and I was instantly rewarded. That's uh, that's what's good. Viewers watching at home, don't keep hands like me. Uh, <laughs> but I have a harrier and a shield. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Nice. This is going to be good. All right. So I'll play that. Do a double master. Oh, Jesus. Um, gives me six. Play a Spartan Terminator and a Projectus. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I'll double defense override you from the hand. All right. I take one. Yep. Pass the turn. Not not nine. Twenty four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I take <laughs> twenty. More more importantly, I slow that solarium down a little bit here. Yeah, that got me pretty good. <laughs> I was kind of playing on my back heels. Might get my tempo back this way. Um. I guess I'm going to pass. Okay. Alrighty. That. To that. Two, four, five, six, seven. Play an Animus. Now I take a thousand. <laughs> Yeah, uh, swing seven and five is 12. I go to 12. Pass the turn. Okay. I'm going to play a storm. And I'm going to pass the turn. That shield generator keeping the math <laughs> in my favor. Could have taken the prototype development base, I guess. I don't know what you've got up your sleeve, though. i got to play for that giant crack back now. You're a little ways ahead. Do another generator. Okay. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just got a Terminator, though. Um, yeah, we'll go into the Citadel. Okay. Um, I want to double block the 
Terminator. And then uh, I will pass two effects in the blocker's window. Yeah. Okay. I'm. Um... Uh, I think I'm okay with that. I'll pass. Okay. Um, it is your priority in the keyword value step. Yeah, I'm passing. I'm not going to play any effects. Okay. Then I will use my storm on this shield. Okay. So ramps you up to five in total defense? Yes. Okay. So two blasts through from the Terminator, but my Terminator is going to die. Both those will die. And then I do five and four is nine into five. So four and four is eight total. Yep. We'll take it. What you needed there was Alpha Strike. Yeah. <laughs> well, you saw the projectus. That's true. But if I projectus it there, I don't kill the site. Right. That that was like why I blocked that way, hoping that you would just like be afraid and projectus, but you're too smart for me. <laughs> I just play this game way too much. <laughs> so I have a forge. I think I'm still dead. I have a spoils and a harvest on my Solarium phase. Okay. So I have five. I have Organa. Okay. Could have used her last turn. And that is all. Well, I didn't. Only made three. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What I should have done was the turn prior to that was chump blocked with my shield and yeah. uh, played Forge last turn and harvested so I could play her. Yeah. But I was hoping to just draw anything <laughs> in those two draw steps. It didn't work out. 10 Solarium, no combatants. Move to attack. So it's Can 4, I... 5 is 9, and another 7 is 16. So 8, 4 is 12. Yep. A negative eight. Negative eleven. Okay. Pass turn. Not having the bolt thorn makes the crack back way worse. Way tougher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, you got me. All right, sounds good, man. So, um, we're only sixteen minutes into the match, Neil. You think we can get one more in for a best of three, and then we'll sure switch over and we'll we'll play just a couple of games on the Joe Tune side. So we're we're only thirty minutes into the video here, give or take a few minutes. So seems um i'll play game three game one was like four minutes long so <laughs> yeah this one wasn't much much longer itself aggro decks moving with the speed of light well i will play first i am mulliganing i will keep all right here we go face down go face down and go Play a shipyard in the back row. Play a spoils. Okay. Play this guy and this guy. Looks familiar. Go ahead. I have to be honest, these hands have made gray hair here look pretty good. Yeah, I'm telling you what, man, it's not a bad card. So I'm going to do a processing plant double master. <laughs> I can't do that. That's cheating you again. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> That's just better anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Go ahead. Right. So I'm going to make three. 
play a Cloud Falcon. Okay. And I'm going to pass. All right. So this is what we call a moment of truth. Either you have the. Or you attack me for seven? <laughs> yeah. And we find out whether or not you have the It's a Trap. So I now have seven. So I'll go to a Hydro Reaver. And I'll swing seven there. Okay. I have no fix. Okay. Pass. Uh, this absorbs three, and I take four. Okay. Your action, good sir. Masterminding is a good card. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. That's what I've learned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're not playing Masterminding as Cynthia, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I keep right. looking to the day where we actually uh, find cards that challenge masterminding for its slot. I I love masterminding, obviously it's great. Having done these tests for nationals and built many, many decks, I think that I like spoils better. Uh just because I like to have two extra points for every copy I play. Yeah. And but I I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They're obviously both good. If if I were to Make a list of cards, just like a pick order for draft. It would be Master Mining followed by Spoils of War. I would take over anything. Yep. But and System I'm Scramble's gonna... got to be up there, man. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will pass that card over everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will play two of these Strength and Numbers and make seven. Yeah. I actually make... Uh... Yep, you make seven. You're right. So two, four... Seven. Wow. I'll well, play these guys. Holy cow. That is a all-out assault force if I've ever seen one. And I'm going to send these guys into your prototype. Yep. Sounds good. I'm going to flip this fire from this guy. Okay. So... Gonna ping that site. Uh, during the keyword value step, I'm gonna ping your prototype. Four three. Yep. Okay, so and then put four barrage on the I take two from the barrage. And then since you put three here, I take three. I can only have three defense, so it's three and is five. So two and three is five and go to eighteen. Yep. And then I will pass. Okay. Well, now my next card is not quite as good as it should be with that many dudes out there. <laughs> T4 that card's six. still pretty good. <laughs> I have six Solarian minus one from the Synthoid makes five, so I'll play a Terminator. Um, well, I better stand my ground here a little bit or risk getting ran over. So. Ah, oh, man, if you play a Bullthorn, I'm in such trouble. <laughs> you have a Centropolis. <laughs> For one turn. <laughs> one turn. One stinking turn. Um, yeah. Ooh, man, this is not good. Well, the Synthoid can't block the Flyers, and you could just as easily hold back your shield, so I'm just going to swing for seven. Okay. I will take seven. And then I'll pass the turn. I don't know if that's the right decision, but... Uh, I don't know what cards you have face down in your hand. I think I would probably leave back the Specialist. I left back the Specialist. Yeah. I, I mean... Yeah. I don't know if it's worth it for you. Like, if I have an Art of War and I draw an Art of War, maybe it's good for you to leave back the Synthoid, but, like, otherwise I just have two twos. Right. All right, well... Let's see. So you have a 6-5. 8-5. 7-5. An 8-5. Yep. Centropolis is on the board. Doesn't that make it a 7-5? 
Oh yeah, sorry. The, the... <laughs> <laughs> Again, the, I'm just the power cheat. of that creature is not very important right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> We spent way too long talking about that. <laughs> the defense value matters. Right. <laughs> so you get the block one. All right. I'll just send the team at your Centropolis. Okay. Ugh. Well, maybe not. Because you went second. So if I do that, then you get to kill me on the backswing, and I don't get a. Crack back. All right, I guess I just have to pass. Okay. End of the turn, we'll hit a falcon. All right, falcon down. <laughs> Two, four, six, seven, eight. Minus one is seven. Do another Hydro Reaver. And man. <laughs> I can kill three things. Possibly. I I think it's in your best interest just to like attack with everything now. Yeah, I, I would have to do something really crazy to like put you so negative that you can't kill me on the backswing with another reaver in play. Yep, I agree. So. Oh, God, that's just so bad for me, though. And in hindsight, it might be better for you not to attack or block next turn, <laughs> so that I can win. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I think that you definitely need to attack there. Um. Well, God, what am I gonna do? Take it. I'm not even sure there's a combination of cards that I could draw next turn that would win me this game. So if I, yeah. So I guess I gotta try to not die. Let's do. Oh, and you have a Centropolis. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's just, just another layer of complexity, right? Right. It, it just makes my blocks so bad. Because, like, maybe I stand a chance if I can, like, triple block, double block, and kill two of your guys, but I can't do that. I have to quad block the seven guy, and because uh, you'll just tap one and... Yeah, but there's there's some there's still probably some advantage of doing that because you're still going to get one for sure. And if you've got an evasion, like the Centropolis isn't going to hit. I don't yeah. know if you've got the evasion or not. But spoilers, I I don't. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> I should. I suppose I could have bluffed it, but yeah, this uh, I guess I block like that. All four guys on the Centoid. Okay. Um. Yeah, well, we'll take, uh, I guess we'll take the, one of the swords out. Yeah, because that maximizes my damage throughput. I guess this guy should be tapped. But... So that's enough to kill the Synthoid, but I've got seven damage. You and got, you've got two, two coming through. Right. Because I got five toughness. So that takes you to 12. And then you put me at one with, oh no, you have Centropolis, so I go Six. to negative one. Yeah, and then just for good measure, system scramble, you have to negative four. Fine. So well, that was interesting. Yeah, I I could have taken either negative. Seven. Yeah, I had a couple hero spoons in my row, <laughs> so. All right, so that's the best of three with Cynthia up against it. Obviously, game one really showcased what both Orn's capable of. Didn't really... And I think game three was a pretty good showcase of this deck. Obviously, I didn't draw the Bullthorn, but like that's the kind of setup that you want to have to play him. I had 
to uh, strengthen numbers, I played that game, and just a million little guys. If I had drawn the Bolthorn, had you know, it'd the have been deck. GG. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have been like, oh, I'm just dead. I mean, you had the Centropolis, so maybe not. But like the the deck ran the way that it was supposed to run that game. I can't complain about it. Right. All right, I'm Mulligan. So we're not going to do a best of three here because we're we're sitting at about 15 minutes left in the video. So we're going to play out this game, kind of check time and see if we have time for another another round. If not, then we'll um, we'll we'll just uh, call it good on this one. But um, this is a Jotun on Jotun mirror match. Um, Neil rolls a two. The old two. <laughs> I roll a six. I will definitely be on. All right. And. Play a face down and go. Okay. And I have the same. Go ahead. Okay. Shipyard, past turn. Shipyard. Shipyard. That's better than I'm doing. Go ahead. Well, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah go ahead oh it is actually all you got <laughs> yeah <laughs> i gotta draw another site in here somewhere well then i get to really one-up you this turn you get draw a site security and post you can play spoils on top of it yeah oh yeah. double spoils you definitely one up me yeah i like five up to you yeah. no big deal no big deal <laughs> so i will make five and I will play. What's the most slightly efficient here? I think shield. Okay. And falcon. All right. Shield. Okay. And uh, pass the turn. All right, I will play this forge. Okay. I have six. I'm going to play another shield. Okay. I'm going to play a Lady Morgana. All right. And then it's time to turn my men sideways. Um, I guess just both at the watchtower. Okay. I'm running right into the Sitsa Trap from whence. You got it. And... From what's the work on that? Sure. Okay. So no damages. Okay. Go ahead. For the viewers who think that attack is weird because I'm running straight into it's a trap, yeah. uh, I'm playing around it's a trap by having a forge in play. That sounds weird, but like half the time I just want these little shields to die so I can <laughs> pump no, my forge. It, it definitely makes sense to me. Um... In a vacuum, I don't think that's a very good attack, but I got stuff in my hand that I want to play. Me too. How to get it out. <laughs> I bet you wish you had a forge and some dead guys. I bet I wish I had a spoils of war. <laughs> Can I have one of them? That too. <laughs> no, they're all mine. Uh, we'll go like that. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. 
right, so I'm going to play this security post, this watchtower. I'm going to play this Morgana. Okay. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. I'm going to play this Saboteur. Okay. And then I'm going to pass to you. Not attacking. This turn, because I drew the sights, I do not want to attack and it's a trap. Gotcha. Also, by having the Saboteur next turn, it's a trap is kind of meaningless on the Watchtower because I can just kill it in response. Do another Watchtower. There's your spoils. Yep. Gonna go to eight. Okay. Three, six, eight. <laughs> Jeez. I hope you don't have the follow of Morgana next turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking say. about how she's like a mini Bolthorn. <laughs> not gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> um Eey, goodness gracious. Uh, what could you have here? Okay. Double Art of War. So they're four fours. Okay. That is acceptable. Okay. I'll take four. Okay. All right. So you got some stuff. So, uh, I have seven. So I'm going to play this oath key. Yeah, it seems good. Play this cloud falcon. Yep. And then I'm going to send all the men's. Yeah, and Morgana into this and the two shields into the other one. Okay. Uh, no defenders. Okay, so that will be six from the Morgana into this one. Okay. Uh, so I take four. Yeah, and then. Eight from the shields into that one. Take six, go to fifteen. And then I will pass to you. And hope that you can't make one solarium and have a Wargana. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> I'm still taking a bundle of damage. These three to there, these two to there. Okay. I will saboteur one of the shields. Oh, wait. I only do three. Yep. You have two Art of Wars. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. Right. I, I take a lot. So yeah. nine... Uh, I take five on the this attack. This would be twelve. Oh hell yeah! Uh, so I take eight. Yeah. Wait, is that right? Twelve and that seven is five, and three is eight. Yep. Okay, so I take eight. And then this is fourteen into seven, so seven and three is ten. Yeah. I think I lose here, but 
I don't think there was really any way I could play around that. So go ahead. Yeah, because uh, I went second, so I'm just swinging back here. Yep. Um, I'll do this, and I'll flip a strength in numbers so that I can turn on my saboteur. Yep. And I'll play these two guys. Then I'll send the team. All right. So. Whoops. It's a, and I'll saboteur the site because it does a little bit more damage. Than. So you made one, two, three, and then you had one, two, three, four, five, six. So you made nine. So that's four. It takes the site to one. And then you're dealing four plus two is six. So this is six, 13, 17. This is only three. So 20, 24. 24 into one. So 23 and two is 25 and go to negative 10. And that's the ball game. Yeah. Again, this this is a hand that Bolthorn would have been good in. I had the strength to play it, and uh, many guys just didn't have it in the draw. I actually think we got time for one more, Neil. Okay. I went um, fast enough. These games have gone fast enough that. Um, the Jotun mirror is probably pretty fast usually. <laughs> yeah, we're we're sitting right at uh, 52 minutes. That game played in nine, so. Um, mulligan. I am also going to mulligan. All right, here we go. I'm going to be on the play again. Go watchtower, right. pass the turn. I have a face down. Go ahead. The watchtower, shield, pass the turn. All right, well, you can fix the rest of your life total then. Yep, I got it. And I will play cards. Okay. I have a shipyard and a spoils. Okay. Your spoils have been uber consistent today. Yeah. So if my, like, two guys on turn two. Go yeah, ahead. for real. Maybe this deck is just really good. We broke it by breaking both horn. <laughs> Something. We'll drop a security post. I think Gray Hair is a great card, but it is it has to be the least impactful three construction card. Yep. And it just it makes it so hard to I'll pass the turn. To justify sometimes. Yeah, I, I totally agree that the construction cost makes it hard to, to build in, but um, you know, if you take the time and actually play with it, you realize that in gameplay, it's probably it is a worth, good card. It's probably worth three construction just because of what it brings to the table in terms of just the amount, the sheer power Jotun get off of an extra guy on the battlefield. You know, I mean, it's yeah, they have so many just like anthems that. It just has to be good, right? Yep. <laughs> it is, for sure. All right, so I have a shipyard. Okay. And an oath key. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to pass. I don't think I need the planned it's a trap here. Okay. Cloud Fortress? Cloud Stronghold? Yeah, Cloud Stronghold. I wish it was a fortress. I wish I could play <laughs> yeah. a fortress on turn four. That'd be awesome. <laughs> four, five, I'm... six. And I think I need to go to seven here, so I'm going to strength to seven, play a Condor and a Falcon. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um... And I'll pass the turn. Uh, 
All right, so I'm going to play a forge. Okay. I did that out of order, but... During your Solarian phase, I'll bounce Oathkey back to your hand. During my Solarium phase? Yeah, just in case oh. you're going to play a strength here. Okay. Oathkey in my hand. Um, in that case, I will replay Oathkey. Okay. And I will pass. All right. Play a Storm Citadel. Your sights are really just going to break this stalemate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it appears like. Play another Condor. Attack the shipyard with um, a Solarium counter. Or seven. Okay, I have no blockers. Um, I'll go ahead and give the Condor plus two plus two, so it'll be nine. Nine? Yep. All right, this absorbs three, I take six. Pass the turn. I'm going to play another Forge. Okay. One, two, three, four. During your Solarium phase, we'll push Oski back to your hand again. Okay. Bounce the Oath key. I guess I have to respond to that if I'm going to do stuff during my Solarium phase, huh? Yeah. Window. Um, I'm going to flip a Spoils. Okay. Not that one. So we'll do that. Then that resolves Oathki in hand. I'll play a Warlord. Okay. And let's see. Man, I'm getting crushed by your sights. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. This is very awkward. Um, I don't think I'm gonna end up blocking here. So let's do this. Some fire okay. from the skies. And I will send these guys into your this thing. Okay. Can't defend the Harrier, but I will defend uh, the sword. Oh, this shield. is just terrible because you have that thing. That's yep. so bad. And I'll alpha strike him. Right. I forgot that you left that guy back. All right. Well, that's no good. Oops. So kill this. Yep. My. Uh, I take one. I shouldn't trade my guys like that. People yeah. watching, do not make that play. Uh, yeah, that was a rough one. Because the site ended up killing the Harrier as well. Right, that was why I attacked with the 2-2. Two -two. Like, I was like, I can get a little value out of these fire from those guys. Go ahead. All right. Well, particularly because this is going to go now really poorly. Because Bergheim is going to come down. And I'm going to put a Slam counter on Bergheim. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got nothing to play for eight, though. Don't know where all my mins are, but they're not here. Um, we'll leave one Condor back. And we'll hit that Forge for uh, three, seven, nine. Okay. Best turn. Uh, 
Oh, and I took uh, five damage. I curved out this game. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to play an Oath Key. Okay. And let's see, do I have tank here? You got one card in hand, one face down. Yep, one defender ready. Am I going to block? So you guys... Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Still can't fight through your sights. You know, because you can never have too much Alpha Strike. Play a Johnny. All right, swing 4, 8, 11, 13 into the Forge. Okay. Um, no blockers, no effects. Uh, pass on effects. You said 13? Yeah. I'll take 9. Pass turn. No, admittedly, Oathkey and Warlord together are pretty happy. They're kind of a happy couple. Yeah, I I think I easily win this game if I don't make that terrible attack two turns. Yeah. Like, I, you get to, like, block and kill my Bolthorn with your plus two, plus two site, and uh, fortress, but um, or stronghold. But, uh, like, I've still just, even even losing the Bolthorn pump, I, like, still go smash for 13 or something. Yep. I'm gonna play Organa. Okay. I will pass the turn. Okay. Nine Solarium, no sight to play this turn. Saboteur, and a Saboteur. Okay. Uh, move to attacks. Since I just have to win and survive. Four, seven, nine into the Watchtower. Okay. So that should be six. And I need sure. to block. Uh, I have to decide how to do so. I will just block both. Okay. Plus two, plus two, the Falcon, so it doesn't die. Okay, yeah, I'm going to respond and flip a, an Art of War. Not that one. All right, that will kill the Falcon. And the sword. Or the shield. And then I take two from Johnny killing the... Correct. Here you go. Alright, so let's play some Heroes Boons. They've been sitting there forever. Just split them up. I'm wildly playing these hero spoons to save time. Normally I would flip them like at the last possible moment. <laughs> um, 
I have a couple guys to play. Okay. And I went first this game, right? I did. You did? Okay. Mm -hmm. In that case, maybe it's right to attack. Probably not. Uh, I will pass. Okay. Nine solarium. Eight to the warlord. Okay. No fun for Neil. <laughs> Well, I got to try to stay alive, and it's not looking very favorable. Uh, I got to pass. You got it. You're good. All right. So if I attack, you get a six power first striker and a four power first striker. Uh, Johnny. I'm going to play this facade and I'm going to pass to you. We're playing the longest Jotun game ever when you said right. we had eight minutes left or whatever. I know, right? We, we've got into <laughs> a, a really tight match here. Just super tight match. Okay. Make nine again. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to get saboteured out of this game. Four to the sab. Yep. Four to the shield. Um, yeah, it's my only attack. Uh, I'll block with oath key. Okay. I'll flip that up. So he's a five and then he's a seven. Okay. And alpha well, strike. Oath key has eight defense. He does. Because he has focus and art of war. Yeah. Um Yeah, that's fine. I'll do it that okay. way. So seven it's gonna be seven, I'll Johnny Cash bounty him and then I'll cloud stronghold as well. Okay. So I lose Johnny, but I kill Oathkey in that process. Cause I deal four damage from Johnny. Mm-hmm. And then Oathkey ends up taking nine or something. Right. So what happens is Oathkey goes from eight down to four. Uh, I got seven, so three blasters to the site doesn't take the site, but I I don't uh, don't lose my sword that way, mm -hmm. and I get rid of oath key on the battlefield. So pass the turn. I really didn't see any other way around it other than to sacrifice yeah. oath key or Johnny to it. Right, I, I think that's fine. Like, there's like literally not a guy left in my deck after the yard. Or that doesn't just trade with the Johnny, so I think you're fine 
trading Johnny with whichever guy you can. Yeah. Um, because you have like the board advantage. I'm just slowly getting ground out by these saboteurs and these sites. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Plus, the sites are huge, right? Like because of Bergheim. Right. I I don't think that really matters against Jotun. and like it just makes it take longer for me to kill you. It's just like one of us is going to stabilize and get to Alpha Strike, and I think it's going to be you. <laughs> yeah. Because you're like killing at least one of my guys every turn with your saboteurs. Okay. Let's kill Organa, if I can. Okay. Um, I'll evade the second one. Okay. So she takes four. <laughs> or no, she yeah. takes zero. She takes zero because you evaded the second one. So. Oh yeah. If if you do them on the the same chain, then it evades both of them. Yep. Both condors. Okay. Uh, I take it. So it's six and four is ten. So I eight, take eight. Go to negative five. I'm not sure you got enough attack power coming back, but we'll see. Yeah. Now with Definitely. Bergheim out there, I feel I like I've I, got a chance. Yeah, I don't think I can do twenty nine to you. Yeah, I just attack for however much this is, and I have a, like the second art of war, but it's pretty good. So Organa's hitting for uh, ten plus another six of sixteen into uh, I guess this absorbs four, this absorbs four, this absorbs three. This okay, sixteen is the five. best. Eleven and two is thirteen. Go to eleven. Yeah, I I would be interested to see how this game played out if I didn't punt away my guys that one turn into your Yeah, that would have been definitely thing, but uh, the double saboteur play saved me there at the end. That was the big deal. So all right. right so you were just like tapping saboteur to draw a card every turn when we were both <laughs> top decking. It wasn't very fair. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that, uh, that actually we ended up with the best of three of both, so we were able to get that in. It took a little longer than an hour this week. I uh, thought we might have another quick matchup, and that kind of turned into a kind of a grindy game, but uh, that can happen in the mirror and uh, shows you the power of the saboteur in the mirror for sure. Um, Neil, I appreciate you uh, coming back on again this week, doing the bull thorn. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks to do another uh, card. If you've got a card you want to see us work with that we haven't done, um, you know, let us know if you want to see a feature on a specific card. We're starting to kind of drill down and, and get to the kind of the bottom of the, the non-competitive cards. There's a few cards left for us to do in these features. Uh, maybe then we'll kind of transition into uh, talking about some of the hyper-competitive cards and, and um, you know, the tier one cards, as we like to call them, and go from there. Um, Neil, you got anything to say to anybody before we call it tonight? Yeah, definitely comment on the video if you have cards you want to see. Uh, it doesn't have to be just... Uh, build around me cards. Um, just Facebook us on the community, anything. We'd love to answer questions. Nationals is coming up. Uh, please pre register. You get a bunch of cool swag, and uh, I hope to see you there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the more the merrier. Neil just won a qualifier last weekend, so congratulations on that. Uh, is it okay to tell him what faction you played, or are we keeping that a secret? Well, since you posted on Facebook already, I am fine with it. I, I played Jotun yep. uh, in a list similar to what it looks like you were playing today. Um, had a lot of the same cards. 
I don't think it's going to be the same list I play at Nationals, but uh, I think Joe Tuner are well-positioned right now, and um, I'm excited to see what uh, what comes out of the last two qualifiers before Nationals. Yeah, I completely agree, man. I think there's, uh, you know, we've got two Jotun wins and one Cynthian win at this point. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I think the Jotun will be well represented, but uh, you got to watch out. Those Cynthian decks can uh, can sneak up on you and those uh, direct damage lists you, seem well positioned right now. You played a lot of seven fives against me today and it was, <laughs> I mean, you made, you made a solid sense. I'd look pretty impressive. Yeah. I told um, you. He, he, but yeah, if if you have any questions about uh, deck building or strategy or anything, uh, hit me or Jesse up on Facebook. Yep. Um, any of the other punch it guys on the community are great. Uh, but get excited for nationals. It's a big deal this year. It is a big deal. Five hundred dollars in cash prizes on the line. So uh, if you guys like this video, though, uh, be sure to at least give me a thumbs up. You know, we we love getting thumbs up. At least tells you that we're tells us that we're making content that you're enjoying. Um, if you hit the subscribe button, that would be absolutely awesome. There's a little bell icon next to it. If you hit that, it'll let you notify every time we upload a new video. And we try to do at least a video every other week. And um, we'll definitely see you all in the next video. Thanks so much.